Hello and welcome. I'm sitting here on a cold, crisp day. It's really chilly outside. It's minus degrees. I don't know about three or four. It's cold enough. But it seems the perfect opportunity to have a go at painting a fox. A fox in the snow. And I wanted to show you a different technique, how I might paint all that floofy, fluffy fur um, without having to do every single brush stroke. And I'm going to do it with the scratching technique. And I wondered if you might like to have a go at that and join me. So come on, let's try it out and see what happens. Now, what we're going to do is a little fox sitting there with his nose up to the weather. Maybe he's never ever seen snow before. Maybe he's not felt snow before on his paws and particularly on his nose because we're going to do this little bit of snow just on his nose. All right. And I want to get that whole feeling of peace and quiet and that moment of taking in a breath and holding it and closing your eyes and thinking it smells lovely. It feels nice. This is just wonderful. Are you ready? Let's have a look. I'm going to flip the camera. I'm going to turn the lights on and we're going to have a little look at our fox. I'm only going to use four colours, I think. So I have Burnt Sienna, which is a really rather lovely orangey brown. And some Burnt Umber, this darker, redder colour here. And I want some Ultramarine. Now, whether you're using French Ultramarine or Ultramarine, either's fine, it's super cool, but we want some of this dark, beautiful blue, this lovely colour, because we're going to make a grey with that. And this finally is raw sienna, and that's this one here, this one here. Now in my palette, I also have some Payne's Grey, don't know whether I'm going to use that, and I have some alizarin crimson, and again, not sure that I'm going to use that either, but I have it just in case, all right? But in the main, they are the colours that I'm going to use. I'll put them aside, they're in my way. Now, the other things I would need to have online here with me, I need masking fluid. And if I'm using masking fluid, I have to use soap. And if you want the masking fluid, you'll find that on my Etsy shop. It's called Touching Magic, one word. I'm going to need a little bit of salt. And this is just fine fine table salt, nothing special. Tesco special that is, dirt cheap. And I want to use a decent brush to start with, this Hake brush. Now supplementary to those, I'm going to probably also use this series of brushes here. So I have a two, I have a four, I have a six and I have an eight. And I may or may not use some or all of those, but I want to have them on hand in case I do. So they are my basic, basic four brushes that I use all of the time from Rosemary's Brushes, Rosemary & Co. Now the strange thing that we're using this afternoon, the really strange thing, is this. This is a porcupine quill. And I bought mine years ago when God was a boy and this came from Amazon or eBay and fishermen use these as floats because you have this lovely, it's, it's a, a quill from a porcupine and so it's empty inside, full of air and when fishermen use them they just float in the water and they use them as floats. But for us they're perfect because we have one bigger end, one thicker end like this. And then here we've got this really, really lethally sharp point. They're very, very strong. I mean, my grandmother used to use one of these for sewing because if she had leather or anything hard, she would use that as a bradle to push through to make the holes that the needle would go through. And this is where I got mine, one of mine originally, from my grandmother's sewing kit. 
but they're super we're going to use that to scratch with now if you don't have that it is not absolutely categorically not the end of the world it's not cataclysmic all you need to do is if you're brave enough take one of your paint brushes and put it into a pencil sharpener and turn it until you have a lovely sharp point my husband found me a piece of dowling in the garage so this is just a bit of dowling that he's he'd been using for DIY jobs and I put that in the pencil sharpener and I've got this lovely sharp point here. So that's another option. But you can find sticks, you can, this is bamboo. I bought, went and stole a bamboo cane from the garden and sharpened it up and you can use something like this as well. Orange sticks, so cocktail sticks, you know what I'm talking about? You need something that's sharp and pointy. I'm using 140 pound Bockingford and I have taped it down. And I'm going to start quite happily by masking out. One brush I didn't tell you about, we're also going to be using a Brigger brush. These lovely thin, thin, fine brushes, Brigger brush. Long in the hair and it carries a lot of paint, but paints the finest line. We're going to use that in a minute for the hair. Let's put this aside so that everything is out of our way. I'll put that there so that you can see it. I'll put my glasses on so that I can see it. And then I'm going to start to mask out my fox. Now, for those of you who may not be aware and haven't used it before, masking fluid, you need to, I use it with a brush and don't put your brush straight in the masking fluid. This is just like copy decks. It will kill and murderate your brushes. So we protect the brushes with soap. I wet my brush. I come into this little bar of soap and I make sure that every hair in that brush is covered. Then we're going to roll it to get rid of any of the bubbles. And I'm simply going to come in here with my masking fluid and mask out my wolf. The little bit of snow on his nose. And I'm coming through. If you have bubbles in your mask, just pull them out like that. Get rid of them because you'll find that the paint will go through them. And before you know where you're at, you'll have dark marks on your wolf, on your fox. So I'm just coming, I don't know why I call him a wolf. It's funny, I've done this with students um, in class and I insisted on calling it a wolf. Maybe I need to paint it again and do it in greys and uh, turn him into a wolf. Maybe that's what he wants to be and I'm just getting it wrong. Now, when you mask out everybody, be generous, would you please? Because we all have this tendency to be mean with it and it doesn't pay us any dividends. You'll never, ever, ever manage to use a whole pot of masking fluid. It will go off before you do. It goes off for me and bearing in mind how much of it I use, don't be mean. So a good centimetre in, all right? Be generous, please. I see that I've missed a line. Look, that's the back of that leg. I missed it. I forgot it. So I'll need to go up there. And that's his haunch there, his, his thigh. And at the moment, I also want to just run along the top of his tail. I'll explain why in a minute when we get painting. Now, the important thing with this is to wipe your brush well afterwards and look, it's as clean as can be, nothing the matter with it. So that's the soap, it's acted as a resist. Now I want to show you how I use my rigger brush. Same applies here. I'm going to go in with the soap. So I wet the brush and I come in and I make sure the whole brush is covered, all of it. And then I'm going to roll off the bubbles like that. 
So the brush has got soap in it, but, but not lots and lots of bubbles. And then I want to start thinking about where I'm going to put the hair and the fur on my wolf. Now, along the top of his head here, I want to paint in lots of teeny tiny little hairs. And the only way to do this, everybody, is to paint at 90 degrees, so right on the tip, and lots and lots of little tiny, tiny brush marks. And you're not going to see this until I take everything off and then you'll see what I've done. And I want to do that around his tail. So this would all be fluffy out into the darker sky. So lots of longer, longer hairs. And I'm not even going to lean on the paper. I'm just using my wrist to flick. The longer the hairs, the floofier you're going to make your fox. Now, as a general rule, it has to be said, the hair will run from the root of the tail downwards, pointing down towards the tip. But of course, it makes sense when we think about it that the, these hairs will also, every now and again, although I'm doing that and I'm curving them a bit, every now and again, one of them will bend backwards. You'll get one or two that will flick and cross over and go the other way. If we did them all beautifully, beautifully straight and, and organised, all heading, marching down towards the end of his tail, it would look quite crackers. So you have to, not unless he's been in the grooming salon, of course, which is always possible, not. So I'm coming down here. And the longer we make these, the fluffier we make him look. If I do them teeny and tiny and small, he'd be a short-haired fox. So when you're painting your cats, your kittens, your dogs, and doing anything with pet portraits, that's got to be worth thinking about. The longer the hair, the longer the fur is on the animal. If it's a short-haired animal, you will only have teeny tiny little hairs. And I'm just using my brush at 90 degrees to the paper so that only the tip is touching. Only the tip. Just like this. Right to the end of the tail. And then I'm also going to put some over this side, over his paw. Because of course he's going to have little black paws. The other place we need to see fur is going to be all down his chest. But this isn't going to be long hair like that. This is going to be much shorter. Litter. So now I'm leaning my little finger on the paper and I'm just only moving those fingers. And if I have my little finger there, that gives me the distance away from the paper so that I can be quite uniform about it using it as a gauge really. So little hairs, and again, these are all in the main pointing this way downwards, but every now and again, I want to flick one out and crisscross it with another. But teeny, teeny hairs. So I'm going into the masking fluid and then I'm wiping on the edge because I don't want to go into that with a blob because I'd, I'd land up with a big mark on the edge and I'm bringing these marks out from the masking fluid. So the first the first place I put the brush down is on the masking fluid that's already there so that I don't land up with a line of blobby blobby edges and that's why I will paint down there like that solidly and then put the masking fluid hairs out. If you just do it with the hairs you land up with a line of thick to thin teardrop shapes all down this edge. Don't like it at all, don't like it. So I will bring you in closer later on once we've got our background in. Once we've done the background, you don't really need to see it anymore and we'll be able to come in a little more closely so that you can see what I'm doing. Put that away. Now, salt's ready, have it on standby. 
and because I'm thinking to myself that I don't want my salt to be all over the page, it's too much, I'm going to grab a piece of tissue like this so that I can put my salt on the tissue and feed it on from there. I'll, that will become clear in a minute, but for now we need to mix our background colour and we have to be careful because it has to be dark enough, it has to be dark enough that all these little bits will show up when we take masking fluid away. But I don't want it to be so dark that it's night time, it's not what I'm looking for. I want that kind of early evening feel, just as he's coming out to start hunting for the night or to start mooching around the way they do. And I need to mix up a, a lovely kind of grey. I want a soft grey and a very good, good, good colour mix to use is this French ultramarine along with burnt umber. And the reason why I like the, these two, they make a very good dark. So I'm just, oh, my paint's dry just in the time I've been sitting here. I was sitting here this morning teaching and freezing to death. So I've turned the heating up and of course now it's um, probably a little too warm for the paints. So there we go. I want French ultramarine in there like that. And let's be sensible. I need a goodly amount of paint here for this background. It's no good being mean with it. And this is the colour I'm going to be using for his legs and for some of the darks within him. So therefore I need to make up a good reservoir of paint. All right. So mix well. Don't be mean. And I'm also going to bring across my burnt umber. Start with a little because I want a blue grey, not a black grey. This could be quite black if I allowed it to be and don't really want it to be for the sky. So let's see what we've got. I'm going to put it on there. Oh yes, you see that's nice. If I add water to that, that's quite a nice colour. I'd be quite happy with that. And that's the kind of depth of colour that I want. So this is too thick, too dark. What we'll do is come into the reservoir and pull it over. So it leaves some there, that's fine. And I'm going to add water to that, like this. And that's my colour ready to go. And I've still got colour there that I can use later on for other areas in the picture. Okay. My starting point with salt always is just to wet the picture a little bit. I don't want it swimming and I don't want it to be puddly, but I do want to come in here and make sure that it's shiny because then the paper won't be greedy with the paint and the paint will sit and float for a little while and it gives me what I call panic time. It's time to think about what you're doing, how it's working and the paint isn't drying immediately. And this is what we want. You can see whether you've covered it all, just look sideways at it. And you can see where it's matte and where it's shiny. And I'm also just going to bring that down over my snow line because I don't really want a very hard line there. And now when I come into my colour, I'm going to start at the top because I want it to be darker up top than it is in the middle. So I'm coming round with my colour. Just work it round. Don't worry about brush strokes because you're going to just destroy all of those in a minute with salt anyway. So it's irrelevant. And then you see I get a soft edge there. Coming down, coming down. Make sure you've got colour against his chest so that we'd be able to see those lovely hairs. That little bit in there. 
I've got a hair that my brush is molting. That's it. I want a bit more colour up there. Now's the time if you want to, to come into your darker colour, darker colour, and just add a little more dark in the corners if you want to. Like that. And then I'm going to put some salt on it. I just want to check out these areas first. So rinse, dab, dab, get rid of the wet, because otherwise that's sodden. And I don't want it to be, so I'm just going to come in there and soften that so that the snow line and the skyline just kind of disappear into each other. And then I take my salt and the way I want to handle this is to pop a bit onto my tissue. And that's too much. I will not absolutely categorically will not use that much. And I want to pinch it. And we're going to use about the amount that you'd use on your dinner. So think about your health and your heart. And I don't want to go mad with it because we land up taking too much snow out. And if your work is absolutely sodden and shiny, your salt will be drowned. So be aware that you want to put that on there and there's still a bit of a shine, but you can't see puddles. If we've got puddles, we're in trouble. The salt will just drown. And now that has to go away and it has to be left. And we have to wait to see what it's going to do. And I can see immediately it's going to work because up here I can already see the kind of graining that salt will create on the paper. And over here. So actually, everybody, that might be a good one. I can see my paper was too wet here and the salt is just sitting there with liquid around it. So I'm coming back. I'm just going to add a little bit more. And then that goes away. I don't want any more. So you can see how much I've used. So there we go. That's what I have left. But don't be tempted to get hold of the salt pot and sprinkle it because it will just pull out all the colour and you'll wonder where your fox has gone. Here is one I painted earlier. And I have to say to you, every one you do will be different. Every single one that you paint. This one here, if you look at it, it's really quite clever because the salt has taken out the burnt umber and left behind the blue. Can you see what it's done? It's literally lifted all of the burnt umber, so it's obviously a lighter colour than the French ultramarine. So the salt has been able to suck the burnt umber into itself, but it couldn't pull the French ultramarine because that's what salt does. It pulls the colour back into itself. Now, just out of curiosity, let me show you this one. This is one that, here's another one I did earlier. I've been painting him a lot recently, I love him. And this is exactly the same. But in the background here, I've used Payne's Grey with a bit of blue. And it's behaved completely differently with the salt, completely differently. It's interesting, isn't it? How different they both are. So that's up to you to practice and play with your different coloured paints and see which you like best. Now it has to be said too that when you're painting this background and when we were putting the masking fluid on, you could, if you'd have wanted to, dip your brush in the masking fluid and splatter it. So you just wet masking fluid and splatter like that. And you get these splats in the sky. And that, when you rub it off, just goes back to clear white paper and gives you the impression of really big snow, snow petals, snow drops, snow flakes, whatever. But if we'd have done that today, we'd still be waiting tomorrow for it to dry. So I thought that I wouldn't use that as an example. But that's there if you felt that you wanted to do it that way. Now, I think what I'm going to do is try and bring you in a little more closely so that when I'm working the fox, you'll be able to see exactly there we are. OK, now, what am I going to do next? I've taken off 
the majority of the masking fluid. So you can see where we have these lovely little hairs where I'd reserved the white. Look at that. And this tail I've left for a minute and I want to just add a little bit more. I'm going back to my rigger brush. I'm going back to my masking fluid and I want to grab my soap again. Oh, sorry, look at this. I've got, got, got it all over me. Goodness sake, Sharon. And soap up. There we are. Make sure that it's all covered. Get rid of those bubbles again. And I now want to come in here and this time I'm going to put the fur up onto the body. This will become clear, so bear with me. So I'm coming in and I'm going to do exactly the same. Lots of little brush strokes, fine, fine brush strokes like this. And as, although I'm pulling it this way, I'm still flicking some of them upwards. Like this, because we're going to put shadow behind those so that they stand out against the rest of his body. That's what we're doing with that. And on this one, I need to reinstate the hair that's over his paws. So we'll do that again in a minute. So you see what I mean? I'm just going in there at 90 degrees. I'm sorry, I'm probably right in the camera's way, but I hope you can see the movement of my hand. There we are. So that gives us that. So I've got hair along there now. I've still got this hair, I can take that off in a minute, and I have fur all the way along here, and I just need to come in here, fill in that bit where I've pulled the masking fluid away, and then I want hairs up over his little tail, like this. And then we need to think about the colours that we're going to use on him. So that's lovely, that's good. Give that a jolly good clean like that so that the brush doesn't come to harm and do that up so that we can't throw it anywhere or spill it or smash it. Incidentally, if you get any splashes anywhere that you don't want like this, don't stress over it. Let it dry and then you can simply rub it off. That's the easiest way to deal with things like this. Now, how are we going to deal with our wolf? Please, sorry. How are we going to deal with our fox? He's a fox, Sharon. I think I spend so much of my time painting wolves, I get them on the brain, don't I? We're going to do this in sections. And the reason for that is because if I went through this at the speed of knots, quickly, fast, furiously, you would lose your way because I would just bamboozle you with too much info. It's easier for all of us if I just do it in sections, just in a, a section at a time. And I'm going to do this, his hip, his thigh. Then we're going to do his tummy, this area in here. And then we can paint in the chest and finally come up to the face. None of it will take long, but I just want us to get the feel of how we're going to do it. And the reason why I'm working what's effectively backwards, it's it's nonsensical to start here because then I'm going to be leaning on it. But the reason is this is a good area to really get your hand in and to get to know how we've got to do it. If I come up here and I start with all the stuff that really, really matters, I could land up in trouble and we we don't get the feel for the for this scratching. I'm going to need my scratchy tool. We're going to use burnt umber, burnt sienna, and we're going to use the raw sienna. All right. So these two come from the same stable. They come from exactly the same place. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the ground. And it comes from sienna. And this is it when it is burnt. It's cooked. So you get this brown. All right. So are we dry? Yes, we're dry. It'll feel tacky, but as long as nothing comes off on your finger, you know that you're okay. 
I want to use a decent sized brush, so I'm going in with my number eight. And this should give me enough paint to come in here and do this area. Now, what I do want to do is just put water across there, an area I'm not going to paint because I want to blend gently into that area and not have a hard line. I don't want a hard line. And I'm going to just come in and drop a little bit of water on again, just to shine, not going up to the edges. And again, this means that the paper drinks the water and isn't greedy with the paint. And if I come into my raw sienna first, this glorious golden, warm, yellowy brown, and I want to lay that into this area here. That's going to be my highlight, where the light is shining onto his thigh. And then I want to pick up my burnt sienna. I don't want too much colour because that will make, it will just disguise it all. So I'm looking for this kind of depth. And I'm bringing that down to his tail. And I'm bringing it up here down the side of him, his back here. I'm running into the water area that I had here. So I'm just pulling that down there. And I want to just soften this again. So when you're softening something, come into it politely like this. Don't go into the colour and start pulling it out. It makes a mess. Come into it politely like this and just nudge it, budge it and smudge it. And then I'm going to nudge and budge and smudge all of that. I want it darker down his back. So my choice at the moment is to come in with some little bit of the burnt umber. And I'm going to put that down his back like that. And where one angle like that meets another like that, a shadow always curves in the corner. So curve it round like that. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to get our scratchy tool and we're going to think all that fur comes downwards this way. Some of it might curve around his thigh a bit. So just imagine where it would be and look what happens to the paint and to the paper. You have to go at it quite hard be vigorous. It's a good word, isn't it, vigorous? And what we're doing is we're damaging the paper. And as a consequence, the paint runs into all those hurt lines where you're hurting it. And you're going to scratch, get that shape around his thigh. And as long as it's still wet, you'll find that you'll get these lovely lines through the work. And when we've completed our little animal, you'll see that that will look beautifully like fur. For the time being, I am not in the least bit concerned about making sure I've got lights and darks in the corners and the nooks and crannies. All I care about is just laying colour in at the moment. That's all we're going to do. We're just going to go through this piece of work and lay the block the colours in, wait for it to dry, and then we'll go back in and we'll add darks. So for now, it's just these browns that we're interested in. You see how that looks like a really nice highlight on his on his leg. So we, you know, this is working. This is good. We want this. So. I can now come in and have a little go at this middle area. So I'm going up a bit, going above it. And it's just enough water to make it damp. Not enough to come in here and cause cauliflowers yet. And again, I'm thinking about this golden colour and I want to pull that in. If the highlight's up around here somewhere, that's probably going to be there too. And then I go back to my lovely scrumptious burnt sienna and I put that in like that. And I want it darker down his back, so I'm going to find my burnt umber 
I'm going to pull that down there like that. Make sure this is all nice. I haven't got enough of the burnt sienna in there. I can see that straight away. There's not enough of this orangey colour in here. So I'm just going to come in and introduce a bit more. And we can get rid of that line. So you rinse your brush. You dab, dab to get rid of the water. It's the water that's the killer. And again, don't come into it and pull it out. Go into it and push it back. Like that. This is all right, this is all sort of soft enough that it'll blend in for the next layer. If you're in any doubt, you rinse, dab, dab, and then you come in from this side and you blend it this way. That'll do. And I'm going to come into this and again, I'm thinking this fur will be wrapping around his tummy, like that. If we think how he, how his physiognomy works and then it starts to come down his body and down his back so again scratch scratch keep going hurt it it's worth pointing out at this stage that doing this is one time only you can't go back on it you can't repair it whatever you do you're going to have to accept the brush mark and the scratch mark that you make. This is it. And when the shine's gone off it, that's it. You're done. So you just have to stop, wait, come back when it's dry. But for you and I, we're going to move up and we're going to see what we need to do here. Now the fur down here kind of has a, a almost like a, a, a capital I because there's a mark around his neck where the fur creases and then you find that there's another mark here where it creases. So let me explain what I mean. All out onto this rough, onto his beautiful, beautiful chest. This is pale, pale fur and it just fades and disappears into the white. To be able to do that, I'm going to wet all of that. I'm going to wet the white as well so that my colour will just bleed into it and it won't be a problem. I want my stop mark to be somewhere there under his ear, so I'm going to wet that above so that I can't come to grief with that. And I'm just going to dampen all of that. Okay. This here is pale, pale fur. So again, I want to use this raw sienna and I don't want too much of it. So I'm just going to come in. I'm fighting shy, you see. I'm not coming right up to the edge. I'm going into there. And then I'm thinking, oh, it can go a little bit further than that. So now I can pull it out. But if I'd have gone too far in the first place, I'd have been in trouble. And again, we blend it by coming in this way. Like that to soften it. And then we start to introduce the lovely sienna, the burnt sienna. So we pull that through like that. Darker as it comes to his back. And I'm just going to go there up to behind his ears there, just for now. And how do we blend this? We rinse, dab, dab. And this time we're going to come in that way, like that. And I want to make sure that stays soft. I want it dark down his back, just the same as the rest. So down here, I want that to be darker. This is the burnt umber. So I want that dark. I want to make sure I don't get the cauliflower down here. So I rinse, dab, 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 and I come back, push it back, like that. Blend that a little bit. And then I'm just thinking about how this fur works. I said to you, I've got this kind of crease through here. So up through here, I have this darkness. So that's the burnt umber, like that. 
and then there's some darkness in his fur down here so we've almost got a cross there and then up here which will later on become part of his ear. So rinse, dab, dab and again soften, 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 soften it and before it dries let's get into it and everything comes from the creases. So this comes this way, this comes from that crease there because the hair is shorter here, the fur is shorter here. Crisscross them, don't just do them dead straight, crisscross it. And then the fur starts to flick out onto this gorgeous, gorgeous chest. So you're going to come right through the light fur, like this. Pull it from this dark line there, and that comes down here. Now you need good quality paper for this. If we try and do this with thin paper or cartridge paper, you'll find that it'll give up the ghost and it'll sulk, and you'll have difficulties. So do do try and go for a good quality water paper color for watercolor paper for this. You want a good quality watercolor paper so that it's hard enough and tough enough to take it. There we are. So we have this softness, long hairs here, long hairs. So I can't do a lot more because my paper's dried and I need to leave it. If you find that happens to you, don't worry. You can always go back afterwards and you can then add another layer of colour and you can do a little more scratching, but it needs to just dry first. What we'll do is we'll deal with his face. I want to go down a brush size now. I'm working on a six because my eight really will be a sledgehammer to crack a nut. It's too big. I don't want to do that, it'll be too big. And with his face and his ear, just one little bit at a time. So let's just, let's just start with his face. And there really isn't a lot of color on a fox's face. So we wet it. Dampen it down, the whole thing, because then you won't land up with harsh lines. And this is pale fur. So we're looking at this gentle, gentle, this is the raw sienna. So I want the raw sienna in there. And I'm bringing that up over his eye, like that. Bring it back to his ear. There's this little bit of white there. There's white there on the top of his head. So I'm going to leave that. And then this just comes through and down and onto his cheek like that. And then we can lift that color up through behind his ear. Do that color for now. Going to change, going to make that a bit darker in a minute. But if we add that for now, and then I can feel confident enough to dampen his ear. And I'm going to come into his ear and I'm going to lift some of that gorgeous, glorious colour into there, like that. Keep every, everything, everything soft. And I want to lift some into that tip, but I want to keep the light here. Now, whilst I have all that wet, I'm coming into my burnt sienna and I want to pull that up the back of his ear like that. All right, so we're going to do that. And there's also burnt sienna just here underneath his eye. So when it's too big and it's blurry like that, rinse and dab and then just push it back. Don't keep pulling it out, push it back like that. This, I'm just going to nudge and budge that so that I don't land up with a hard edge there. And then I'm going to take my brush, my little scratchy tool, and I'm only going to do a little bit on his face. Now this is tiny little hairs. So we want little, little scratch marks and they come from his eye. Imagine that the hair's growing from this area. So little scratch marks out like this just there, just to draw your eye to it. 
I'm going to do some down here where it starts to come onto the ruff of his neck, like this. And I want some in his ear. So this is how we get the hairs in his ears, by coming through and doing that. At this point here. Imagine his head comes round and down, down like that. So this is where those hairs would be coming from. And only in that light area, only in there, because this is all going to be the back of his ear. All right, so that's all you need to do. This is all such tiny hair that really you're not seeing anything. I'm just going to give it a little bit of texture by sticking the end of this into it, that's all. So I'm just giving it texture so you can see that. And then I'm going to say to myself, that's it, leave it alone for the minute. That, I'd like it to dry. So what we'll do is come down here and we'll put his two legs in, shall we? Every fox deserves a leg. Okay. This, I'm going to use the same mixture. So the same mixture that I've used before, this dark, dark blue, but I don't want it to be blue anymore. So I need it to be black. I'm going to bring the burnt umber through into it and that will make it really, really quite dark dark blacky brown and that's the colour I'm going to come into for his little feet and I'm going to handle this in two different ways I want to come in here and I'm going round that front edge of his leg like that and I'm pulling it up like this there all right that's tucked in under the fur and then I'm going to come back with my brush and I'm simply going to run a wet brush along there so that the colour runs up to the next leg. That's all. That's all I'm going to do. And that has to dry now before I can go in and paint the front leg. So that's okay. Leave it alone. Don't touch. What we can do though, now we've got this colour in our palette, is take our number two and I'm going to pinch that colour and I just want to come in here and pop his nose in. So it's just this dear little nose, like that. And I'm leaving that because I want that to look as though that's the snow on the tip of his nose. This is dry, his mouth is dry, so it means that I can take my paint and I'm going to come along his mouth and I'm going to just put the line in. Now because his face is lovely and flush and we're looking at the side, the profile, we can come in with his mouth here and I'm going to run it down. Now there's a dip there and that dip is where his mouth goes over the canine tooth and then it comes back. And what we'll do with that is going to take the next size up, because this is too small to blend with, with any great deal of comfort. And I want to take the next brush and I'm going to just come in underneath and gently, gently, gently fade away. Rinse and dab, keep it clean, don't let it be too wet. And I'm just going to pull it to there. All right, so we've got that lovely little face, that lovely little smile. And if that's dry enough, I'm not convinced it is at the moment, so I'm just going to hold fire. What we'll do, don't go anywhere where it's wet, because as soon as we start doing that, you then find out that it all starts to run. So this is dry enough for me to come back down here. I want to lay a shadow in underneath that tail, so that the tail is casting a shadow where the fur goes down behind it. And that's easy. We just take this lovely dark, and I want the brush full of that, not, not too much colour, and I'm going to come in there, like this is what we call glazing, because we're laying one colour over another, I'm putting that in, I rinse, dab, dab, and I come in this way, 
and don't fiddle with it just come through it and wipe it just wipe it look at that he gets beautiful shadow underneath his tail all right now we can do that down here as well and put shadow underneath his tail on the snow and i want to do that with a bit of the blue so i'm taking my french ultramarine and i'm going to take a little bit of this dark so that neutralizes it a bit and then i want to come in here and have just a tad not too much a little bit of red and that makes it a mauvey blue so it softens it warms it and what we're going to do here is lay that in under his tail so i've got my paint on this brush i don't want to waste it i don't want to throw it away but i do want this to be wet so i'm just wetting all of that beyond where i want it to be color so that when I come in underneath all that fur and I do that, I get this lovely softness through there. Rinse, dab, dab, and then I can come through and I can let that bleed and just let it do its own thing. When you've got an end like that, don't go into it and keep pulling it out. Go into it and push it back. And then you don't land up with this line where you have to keep moving it. I'm getting rid of all the extra bubbles on there and the wet on there because if I don't they could cauliflower or it's going to take so long for that to dry that you and I will never get out of here tonight so let's just do that oh but didn't this work well what else can we do with that let me show you I'm going to take that dark color and I'm going to run some of it up into there and because I don't want to waste the paint, I'm going to take another brush. I'm just going to blend. You see, you always come into the paint from the side that you want to manipulate. Like that. I want it to be dark down his back, so I'm going to come right down his back. Like that. I'm going to take this brush and I want to just soften it, stroke it everybody, just stroke it. I want to come in round this area here, I want that to be dark in there. And I want that to be darker. And again, I get hold of that, I put it up like that, soften that. And then I also would like to come into the ear, down to there, down to there. This is what I was telling you about this kind of eye shape in the fur. And again, we soften, soften, soften. Soften it, gentle it, nudge it, budge it, smudge it. And you're laying one colour on top of another and that's what keeps it clean. This is called glazing. So that's one way to do it with a hard, sharp, sharp edge. Down here. Soften it there by running up one way and the other way. Now, there's something else that you can do too. With his eye, there's always this lovely mascara. He's got eyeliner. And down there, from his eye, I haven't painted his eye in yet, so, so be patient. But the other way to drop in shadow and colour is to do that like that when it's wet. Wet it and then just let the colour flow into it. We're going to do that as well with his ears. So there's, we've got just here and here along the top of the ear, the tip of the ear, we have darkness. And we have darkness. I want it a bit darker than that. So wet it first and that gives you control and then you can go in and manipulate it. Okay. We can also know now that I want to put his eye in. I'll use the fine brush for this. And I want to use good dark colour. 
and I need to come in here and I'm going, oh, I need a new number two brush. This one's really scruffy. And I'm going to do that. So it's just met the water. So now cleaned the brush and I've just dampened it and I can come in and I can make that darker. And then I want to come into this line and I want to soften it. Don't want that hard. I want it soft on both edges. There we are. Well, it strikes me that foxes, you know, do look like corgis, don't they? Interesting, that. <laughs> I want real dark around the edge of his ears, all the back of his ear. And all the tips of their ears like this have really dark fur on them until it reaches that little white bit of fluff there. And we soften that onto the ear by coming in this way and doing that. And then this way, I have to do it like that. There. Now I've decided that I don't have enough golden yellow down here. I want to put some more in. So I'm going to pick up my yellow, this lovely raw sienna, and I'm going to drop it in like this. Do be brave, rinse, dab, dab, come in, manipulate. Rinse, dab, dab, come in. There we are, happy with that. I have no doubt that if I wanted to scratch a little more out here, that would tolerate it now and give me more fur out through this area. So that's okay. Like that. His chin folds over and I do want to put a little bit of this grey. And I'm really going thin here, so I'm picking it up from the edge of the palette here. So I really want thin colour. And where his chin curls over, you know in, in and out at the bottom of it, who, those of you who've got dogs and cats, you've got the two bones of the jawbone and there's a dip in between them here. So we want to give the impression of that. So not to the edge, don't go to the edge. I'm going to go down there, rinse, dab, dab, and coming in, I'm just going to soften that, that edge there. So that gives me the dip and the edge in his little jaw. So that's that's super cool. Happy with that. Now I think we can go back and do this leg. So if I take my dog, this dog, and I come in here, and I'm going to now do the other foot. But now you can see the differentiation between the two legs because I've got that shadow that lighter area down there. The back of his leg's going to be dark. So I want to make that dark, like that. And it has to be dark where the fur is, otherwise we're not going to see it. And now with just a damp brush, I want to pull the two together, like that. And what do we do up here with the fur? I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to fluff it away like that. Just disappear it, as we were saying earlier on. That's all I'm going to do. That means I'm quite happy with my fox. I'm looking at him. Do I like the way he is? Do I need to change anything? Do I need anything else darker? Probably not. I might like a bit more dark up through there, however. So I'm just going to add that. And do that and um, that gives us the chance to go back into the face because there are a few bits and pieces I just want to titivate up there just a few little bits and pieces I'd like to make the back of his ear darker so this is burnt sienna this is burnt umber put them both together and I want to come in there and really make that a bit darker so I'm going to nudge it and budge it from that side and then I'm going to nudge it and budge it from that side. And that gives me a bit of a darker colour down the back of his ear. OK, now the other thing we've got to think about is little animals on their muzzle. They have these little follicles for their whiskers. 
and they do absolutely they do run in definite lines and cats normally have about five rows and I'm looking at my little fox and I'm just going to do something like three so they run in rows like this some are lighter than others some are darker than others so I'm just going to come in there and they're not all the same length there we are so we leave that because if that's too hard and it obviously is we're just going to let it dry and we'll go in in a minute and we'll just give it a bit of a smush and I would like to add another little bit of burnt sienna to his face I want a little bit more colour up here so to do that I'm simply going to add a bit of water And then I'm going to add a bit more of my burnt sienna. And just soften it in like that. Soften it, soften it, soften it. Is this dark enough down here? Maybe not. Not now. So I just want to. And again, clean it, blur it, smudge it, budge it like that. There we are. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. Happy with that. If this is dry, if it's too hard, damp brush, not wet, damp. Come in and just gently, gently. There you go. That's better. That's better. And I'm going to just blot it. There we are. So that's fine. That can dry. Let's finally do his tail. That's dry enough to come in. And I'm going to take the masking fluid off. And for that, I really, really like this little tool. This is called the Mask Away. You can get these from the SAA. They're super cool. It's just like a piece of, um, you know, we used to wear those sandals when we were kids, some of us. Um, crepe sold sandals. That's what it is. Look at it. You can pick the, monk, the muck off it. So it doesn't go on the carpet. That's the great benefit here, because I work on a carpet. And it means I can take all of that off. And I've got these lovely fur. Look at this fur. This great big bob brush of a tail. Look. There we are. Sorry, that's what we call socks, his tail. We tell him he's got a bob brush. It's not fur, is it really? Poor little socks. Now, that's our cat for anybody who doesn't isn't aware. Why did we put the tail in? Didn't have to put a tail in, but putting a tail in is a lot easier than doing all these feet. So if I've got that there, I don't have to worry about all the rest of it. I can just do this. Now, what I do want to say to you is the hairs on the outside of the tail, I'm going to leave white because they will look then as though the light is shining on them, they're shimmering, it's golden and it's light. If I were to paint them all, I'd lose my definition. So I like this feeling of light around here and I'm going to leave it. I will do exactly what I did previously. I'm going to come in and wet the tail so that the paper accepts that and doesn't guzzle the water. The tip of the fox's tail is white so I intend to leave that white but I want to pull the colour into it. Here I've missed the masking fluid, doesn't matter, you can put the hairs in there with white gouache so that doesn't matter. Do that afterwards. So that's now nice and damp. I'm coming in with the highlight colour. So this is the raw sienna. And I'm imagining that the light would be falling on his tail all the way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What did I just say about the tip of the tail being white? I carried away with myself, look. Pull it back, just pull it back. There you go. So that would be the highlight. Then if I come in with my lovely burnt sienna, round through here, on the bottom and I'm going to do the same on the top. This is why we needed that darker because otherwise this would get lost. 
I know I need the bottom side of his tail to be darker, so that's a little bit thicker, that burnt sienna there. So just more pigment. And then I'm also going to come into that. I'm going to double load. I want the burnt umber. Oh, I've run out of that colour. Look, whoops. Let's quickly scrum up some more. So I want burnt umber on the brush and I want that dark. And I'm just going to run that white through and round there. And then all of this come in, damp brush and just poke it. Soften the whole lot like that so that you don't have that hard edge into the white. Same applies with the top. Come in and just that's it. I'd still like that darker on the bottom. We will get there. So down through there. That's going to be in dark shadow, that. And again, so I could just come through and nudge that. And then I take my stick and all of that fur, all of it comes from the root of the tail. And it will all come through this way and pull this colour through into the white so that you've got the join. Get the feel, get the movement in that tail. So you want some straight up through the middle like that. You're also going to want some curving and curling and flicking out, crisscrossing like this. Pull the cut, the cut, I'm pulling the colour as you can see with this tool and it's coming out over the white hairs, so that's fine as well. Keep scratching because there's a lot of hair on this tail. Cross some of the lines, cross some of the marks. Starting to dry, so my time is running out. As I said, when it's dry, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever that you can't add a little bit more colour to that in the same way that we did up here in the top areas. You can add a bit more colour and you can scratch again. So that's all doable. But for now, that is looking quite good. So I'm looking at it on the screen. So we've got this lovely highlight area. I don't think there's enough... I'm just going to come back with my raw sienna and lift, glaze a little bit more in because I still don't think that I've got in. It's too much of a light stripe through his tail. Don't like it. It's too much. There we are. There. Whiskers, final, final, final thing. And then I'll let you go home. You are at home, aren't you? <laughs> so, we need a dark for this. We really need a dark. And I'm hoping this will do the trick. I'm going to use some more of the blue, some more of the brown. And to get this to work really well with a rigger brush, you need it to be probably about single cream thickness. So you don't want it too thin, you don't want it too thick. So single cream, and I'm going to put the brush in at the whole brush. I still want it to be bluer than that. Maybe I'm going to go with this one, everybody. I'm going to put the whole brush in the paint, and I'm going to drag it off the palette so that that last little globule stays there. And then I want to come in here, and I'm going to think about his whiskers. Now, some of they all come from the hair follicles, and some of them flick backwards onto the face. Now my paint's too thick because it's not running. So some of them pull backwards like that. Some of them pull 
down over the chin and the muzzle. Little ones from the bottom here. Those of you who've got cats and dogs know what I'm talking about. They don't tend to come up and over and above. So we want some little whiskers like that. And you just use the tip, tip, tip of your brush, that's all. We've got our snow on his muzzle. If you wanted extra snow, just use white, white gouache and come in and flick with white gouache. And that would be lovely because you'd get snow over your fox. And to do that, I don't ever put the white gouache on my palette because it makes a mess. So, just dig digging around in the cupboard, I use a lid. This is our socks who loves cat milk. My husband moans about it because cat milk is dearer per mill than the finest whiskey, would you believe? He says he knows where he stands when it comes to the cat. Look, now, I want to use a bit of credit card. Mr Tesco's loans, buys, gives me these, which is really useful. And we need a nice flat brush. So when I say a flat brush, you need a springy, bouncy brush that's going to go boing when you hit it. Something like this just goes meh. So don't bother with that. You want a springy, springy brush. And we need this to be consistency of single cream. And you need a decent brush full. So again, I'm filling my brush up. It's no good just being soppy with the tip of it. So I'm filling my brush up. And we're not going to flick sideways because then the iPad, the paint palette, this happens then. Oh, for goodness sake, Sharon. Oh, it's a good day, isn't it? Let's get rid of that. Honestly. Amateurs. And all I'm going to do is flick straight down. So straight down, splat. Like that. In the darker areas, particularly because it's effective there, you'll see it. But you do need to have the paint on your brush. There you go. So if we go over some of that, where his air, his here look over his legs, and that gives us lovely snowflakes. It's snowing. It's snowing. So what can you say? Happy Christmas, Mr. Fox. I hope it's a good one. I hope the year ahead is bountiful, and I hope you have babies, and I hope you keep away from the gamekeeper. And just enjoy your life. So there we have it. That's our winter fox, our festive fox. I'm sitting here and I'm glowing underneath these lights. I've got so many lights in here. They're shining and bright. But I wanted to say to all of you, bless you for joining me today. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed doing that no end, I can't tell you. And it's lovely to have had you with me to enjoy it with me. And I wish you all the most amazing Christmas. I hope you have a lovely time. As I say, sit down with a glass of wine in one hand and something yummy in the other and either watch the telly round the fire or maybe you'd like to sit down and have a go at crafting and arting over Christmas. I'm going to. I have a greenhouse to make. Not in the garden. I love you all. Thank you very much for sharing this with me. It's been such fun to be with you. All right then. Merry Christmas, all my lovely friends. Enjoy. Have a wonderful time. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.